And I might add, if you, if you further define what carbohydrate intolerance means and what you know yeah. what's happening, and it, 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 you know, there's there's many things happening that, that sort of fold into what we consider carbohydrate intolerance. But fundamentally, what's happening is when you consume carbohydrate, if if you're processing that in a healthy way, it's primarily being oxidized into carbon dioxide and water. You use it as fuel and muscle primarily. When you're carbohydrate intolerant, uh, a significantly greater portion of the incoming dietary carbohydrate is actually being converted to fat in the liver. So it's this uh, mismanagement of dietary carbohydrate that is fundamental to the carbohydrate intolerant state. And so if you follow sort of that metabolic path, if, if you're processing carbohydrates by converting them to fat, so de novo lipogenesis, uh, there are several downstream events that, that you could predict, such as uh, your triglycerides would go up in your blood, that uh, you start to show a certain lipoprotein cholesterol particle size pattern in your blood, characterized primarily by a predominance of the smaller LDL particles, and this may be related to lower HDL. And of course, uh, this can lead down, down the road to higher blood sugars, uh, and perhaps other features of metabolic syndrome. So I think if a person starts to to show more of these features, that that's a harbinger that you know they're they're exceeding their body's carbohydrate tolerance, and that they need to dial it down to to get back into a, a level where they can manage it health, healthy. But that varies from person to person. But those are some some clinical tests that that could be used to to give you a, some resolution on that.